let's talk about a few kinds of special matrices. One special matrix that is often talked about is a square matrix. A matrix is square if the number of rows equals number of columns. It's really that simple. Associated with a square matrix is something known as the diagonal elements of the matrix. The diagonal elements of an n by n square matrix A are the elements A, I, I for I running from one up to n. So basically for however large this matrix n, that the diagonal elements are elements 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on until we get to the last row and column of the matrix A. The elements that are not diagonal elements of A are called off-diagonal elements. So that's a brief summary of square matrices. Another special matrix is known as the identity matrix. So an identity matrix is always a square matrix. And we're going to define the n by n identity matrix as I, capital I, boldface I, with a subscript of n times n. And that's a matrix where all the diagonal elements of the matrix are 1, and all the non-diagonal or off diagonal or off diagonal elements of the matrix are zero. Typically, the context makes it pretty clear what the size or dimension of a, the identity matrix is. So our original notation is often simplified to simply boldface capital I, or even sometimes just capital I. I've never seen it as a lowercase i, but you oftentimes don't see the dimensions here in the subscript indicating how big the identity matrix is. It's very easy to create a diagonal matrix in R. You simply use the notation diag n, where n is the number of rows and columns of the matrix that you want to compute. So to create a three by three identity matrix in R, you would use the command diag three. And you can see that when we run that, we get a three by three matrix with ones along the diagonal and zeros in the off diagonal elements of the matrix. Lastly, we want to talk about the inverse matrix. This is a very important matrix that often comes up in statistics and data science and mathematics. Matrices are only invertible if they are square. So an n by n matrix A is going to be invertible if there exists a matrix B such that A times B equals B times A equals that n by n identity matrix. And so the inverse of A is actually denoted by A inverse. So where I have this B here, the normal notation that we would use is A inverse because it has that property. Once again, inverse matrices only exist for square matrices. A natural question is, how would we go about computing the inverse of a matrix in R? And that can be computed using the solve function. So technically, if you want to get the inverse of a matrix A, then you can use the command solve and then in parentheses A. However, this is going to have numeric issues. So I don't want to go into too much detail, but overall the idea is that if you compute if you compute the inverse in this way, you're going to have less precision. You may get results that don't work out as well as you would hope to, simply because the computer has to round values as it's doing this inversion process. So that's not the best way to do it. So in practice, almost always when you look at the formula that you're trying to compute that has an inverse in it, nearly always the inverse of your matrix is going to be multiplied by another matrix, which we'll call B. Uh, I use lowercase here because we're going to be talking about multiplying it by a vector, but it could just be any other matrix in general. So to compute A inverse of B, we can use the syntax solve A comma B. And that's how we compute A inverse multiplied by B. So in this example below, we want to use the solve function to compute A inverse B. So I'm going to define a matrix A here. This was actually defined in a special way to ensure that the inverse exists. It doesn't always exist. And then I have a, another matrix, or technically a vector in this case, a 3 by 1 vector B. So 1, 0 0.7, and 3. And I want to compute A inverse B. And so to compute A inverse B, I'm going to run solve, and then in parentheses, A comma B. And so when I do that, I get my result here, which is a 3 by 1 vector with values 0 0.11, 0 0.18, and 2.96 rounded to three decimal places. In general, I do not recommend that you round at all. I'm only doing this for visualization purposes here. So here's our rounded results in a convenient format. In general, you would just keep this as an object in R so that you can use it later. But that is how you would go about computing 
not really the inverse directly, but the product of an inverse multiplied by some other matrix B.